I'm John Skinner, and this supports Chapter 11 in my book, Fishing the Bucktail, and the book covers bucktailing for a variety of species from surf, kayak, and boat. In this video, I'll be wading a bay and casting for fluke with a bucktail and Berkeley gulp alive. In this location, I've waded in up to about my knees, and I'm casting into a channel where there's about 9 feet of water at the deepest point. And there's a quick look at the retrieve speed. You'll see I'm using a slow cranking speed, but a rather rapid jigging of the rod tip. My terminal rig consists of a three-quarter ounce bucktail at the bottom. About 12 inches above that, there's a dropper loop with a 3 Ogamagatsu bait holder hook. Both the bait holder hook and the bucktail are tipped with Berkeley Gulp Alive, either the four-inch swimming mullet or the three-inch shrimp. There's a short video on my YouTube channel that shows exactly how to tie that rig. And I'm dropping the rod tip parallel to the water here because I'm getting into a little bit shallower water and I've had a few bumps and I'm pretty sure there's a fish behind it. As I mentioned, I'm casting into about 9 feet of water here, and I have a little bit of current moving from right to left. Um, I'm letting that rig sink down towards the bottom, and I'm trying to work it just right along the bottom. And what you'll notice sometimes is that I'll, I'll pause the retrieve just to make sure that bucktail sinks down towards the bottom again. I don't want to be too high and up out of the strike zone. This is a real nice fluke. The uh, fisheye distortion on the camera doesn't do it any justice, but uh, yeah, this is a real nice one, so I'm going to make sure I, I walk it into shore instead of just trying to grab it. Some people who were swimming nearby saw me land that, so they came over to check it out, and uh, here's the still picture they took. Yeah, the rod is a 7 foot pen regiment rated for a 10 to 17 pound test line. The reel is a pen 360 slammer and I'm using 20 pound test braid as the main line and a 20 pound test fluorocarbon leader. There's one of those pauses where I'm letting it go to the bottom and I'm watching my line and when I see the line twitch I know it's touched the bottom I try to move that jig immediately because I don't want it to just lay there motionless.
I'm fishing on a 19 inch minimum limit and uh, on this trip I threw back a couple that were right around 19 inches. Uh, I've got a lot of fluke in the freezer at this point and I'm just going to keep a couple of the larger ones for a fresh meal. Uh, sometimes you might notice a green buoy out in front of me and other times you don't see it. Uh, this is actually the first time I've fished this particular area, so I, I really don't know where the better spots are. So what I'm doing is I'm just moving up and down the shoreline and uh, trying to search out places where I get a few hits in a row and, and then focus on those spots. This is a nice one. There's certainly no need to measure this one, and uh, it's going home for dinner. You might notice that some of these fish hit two, three, four times uh, before I actually hook them. And, um, you know, I just keep it moving, and a lot of times I'll get the fish. And there were not many times where I had hits like that and didn't end up hooking up in the end. Uh, if you watch the underwater video on my YouTube channel, you'll see that many times the fluke will follow and keep hitting and keep hitting and, uh, you know, eventually get hooked. And this is a, a real nice. Um, advantage of using the Berkeley Gulp because they don't tend to pull it off the hook the way they would a soft bait. Um, the Gulp is also very nice for casting and if I was casting with spearing or something, um, or sand eels, you know, sometimes that bait would go flying off the hook but it's really not a concern with the Gulp. On this trip I fished about two hours and uh, my total was 19 fish and I had two real nice keepers and uh, I threw back a couple others that were probably just a little bit over. And um, I, I fished about the last hour and a half of incoming current, and now uh, I included this little video clip because the current has now switched around to outgoing, and if you uh, compare this to the water clarity on the incoming current, you'll notice quite a difference. And the, the water was very clear on incoming, and now uh, it's starting to get a little bit cloudy, and if you look, you can actually see some weed drifting by, and you know that's often the difference fishing incoming current versus outgoing current uh, when you're near an inlet. In this case I am fishing fairly close to uh, an inlet between the bay and the ocean. Okay, this is a different trip in a different location, and uh, I added this because this is much shallower, and uh, maybe you can tell by the water color here, I'm casting the very shallow water, actually 
uh, about two feet of water and it, it slopes down to about four feet and it really doesn't get any deeper than four feet but uh, this is incoming current and a lot of times uh, the fish will move up into the shallows on incoming and, and you know if we just work little dips and so forth uh, you know the fluke do not hesitate they come up into the shallows uh, because I'm in such shallow water here I'm fishing with a three uh, with a uh, one half ounce bucktail This is another nice example where the fish is just going to keep hitting over and over again until I can finally get a hook into them. That's another one for the frying pan. Okay, I hope you uh, found this helpful and thanks for watching.